hello guys and welcome to this video in this one we will be continuing our journey to organize cmake code and we want to be using the include command as we did in the last video which had quite a good number of drawbacks the biggest one being that it pollutes the global scope with things we do in included cmake scripts we are going to use the add subdirectory command instead, which is going to create its own nested scope for included CMake lists that txt files. This is going to be the same project we've been doing for a few lectures now. It's going to be the math library, which is going to be used by the stats library. So the statistics library is going to be pulling stuff from the math library. The application binary rooster is going to be pulling stuff from the statistics library. But now we are not concerned with breaking our code into logical units. We want to organize the CMake code. In this case, we will be setting up separate files containing our CMake code, but they are not going to be simple scripts. They are going to be actual CMake lists that txt file that wrap around the logical component of the math library and the stats library here. Let's not wait anymore. We can look at these files here. We will change our code really to reflect what we want to do here. We will create a library. Notice that the folder structure is still the same as we had before. We have our root folder, we have a world folder, we have a source folder, which is going to in turn contain a math folder and a stat folder. Each of the math and the stat folder, it's going to contain its own CMake list that takes the file. This is what we do here. This is the CMake list that takes the file living in the stat folder. So it's going to set up our statistics library. And notice that it's not starting from the location of the main CMake list.txt file. And this is the first difference you should notice compared to CMake scripts that we used in the last lecture. So we set up a target included directory again. When we say CMake current dir, we get to the location where this CMake list.txt file lives, and it is going to be this folder here and uh, we can jump directly into the include folder and set up our include directory. Once we have the library, we will link to the math library and the rest is really easy. It is the usual stuff that we did before. We also set up the math library the same way we do that, but the code for that is going to be living inside this CMake lists that txt file. Notice that it is really easy to think about it. If I am looking for an include directory for the stats library, I can jump directory into the include folder without really going back and think about the main CMake list that txt file. This is the main benefit of using the add subdirectory command. And how do we use it? We go in the main CMake list that txt file and use it like this. Notice we say add subdirectory. We go in the source folder. We go in the math folder and we find the CMake list that txt file in there and we include it. We don't have to specify the CMake lists that txt file. If you do something like this, CMake knows to go in this folder and find the CMake lists that txt file that lives in there. And it is going to be looking for this guy here and include it. If we include here, CMake is going to find this guy here and include it. And everything is going to fall in place. Now that we have an idea about this, I think we can head over to Visual Studio Code and actually do this. What we will do is setting up a new folder in our repository here. So let's do that. We say episode 010. I think this is the number here. We copy code from the last lecture because it's going to be almost the same. We will be just using include the directory here. And once we have this, we can open this up in Visual Studio Code pretty quick. Let's see if I can do that. We open this in Visual Studio Code and we have our project here. I recommend you do the same. You don't have to retype the same thing. Now, let's go to the main CMake list that takes the file. You see it is using include. We don't want to use this. So we can take out this for now. We can head over in our math folder and rename the math.cmake file to be a CMake lists that takes the file. So let's rename this to be CMake lists.txt. We can go in the stats library and also do the same. Rename this to be CMake lists.txt. This is the first thing that is done, but 
in these CMake lists that TXT found, we no longer have to think from the perspective of the main CMake lists that TXT file. If we need to add a library, we can tell it to directly find this file here. So from the perspective of this CMake lists that TXT file, let me highlight it so that everybody can see it. From the perspective of this CMake list that TXT file, if we wanted to find super math CPP, we don't need to go through C SRC and math whatever. All we need to do is say super math. How cool is this? If we need to reference this included directory, we no longer need to go through SRC. We can directly say include like this. And this is going to be really cool. We do the same to our stats folder. So we need to find the stats file. We don't need to go through SRC. We can directly reference it like we do right here. And notice this is the C make lists that takes the file of interest. And we want to reference the stats file here. This is what we are doing. Target include directories doesn't need to go through SRC and starts anymore. So we can take out all this junk and we will do the linking we need to do right here. Now that we have the changes done, we can head over to the main CMake lists that TXT file. When we need to set up the math library, we can say add include, hmm, add subdirectory. Okay, we can say SRC math. This is going to go in this folder and find this CMake lists that txt file here and use it to set up our math library. This is done. Let's do the same for the stats library. Add subdirectory. We do SRC and say stats. That's going to be the folder that contains the CMake lists that txt file of interest here. This is our thing. And if you run the application, it's going to work. Now, some of you must be wondering, Daniel, why did you put the main CMake lists that takes the file to the top here? Why not put it in the SRC folder? You could do it that way, but doing things this way gives me the flexibility to add other folders later on. Suppose I want to add a documentation folder, a test folder. I can add that to the root here and update my CMake lists that takes the file accordingly. So this is the way I like to do things, but you could certainly put that in uh, the SRC folder and change things accordingly. So let's try to build and run the application now that we are using add subdirectory. One thing you should notice is that if we are in the math library, we no longer need to reference things from the perspective of the main CMake list that takes the file. We can reference things using the current CMake lists that takes the file we are in. And this is really, really cool. Let's view terminal. This is going to bring us in our folder here. If we do ls, we will find SRC and our CMake lists that txt file, we can mkdir build to create our build folder, cd build to go in there. And we can say cmake g ninja and say reference the cmake list that txt file that lives in a folder on top of us. If we do this, this is going to generate our build files in the current build folder. We can say cmake build the current thing and it's going to build our binary. If we run it, it's going to say the mean. This is really cool. This is really good in that we have things confined to each specific CMake list that takes the file. And we don't have to think from the perspective of the main CMake lists that takes the file. Another benefit that we can't really understand now is that variables we set up in our nested CMake lists that takes the file will be nested in this scope of this file here, and they won't pollute things that we have in the main CMake lists that takes the file. I think we will talk about CMake variables in a few videos ahead, but this is really a good way to organize your CMake projects into separate chunks. I hope you found this video useful. I am going to stop here and I will see you next time.